All right, all right, what's up Modern Bay Tribe? Travis here with the Modern Bay Company. As you guys know, we do Subaru conversions into vintage Volkswagen Bay window buses, just like Gus here. Welcome back to the Gus build. So uh, hopefully you guys watched the disassembly uh, video for Gus, uh, where we basically went all the way through, removed everything that needs to be removed for the conversion, and a few extra things, <laughs> just because Gus needed some love. Um, and today's video is all about, uh, we're completing Gus's uh, totally reworked uh, or restored steer steering system. And the last piece of that is the steering coupler, which I'll show you guys. So these are almost always 50 plus years old, depending on the age of the bus. They're almost always original. They're dry rotted, cracked, and just to be totally blunt, they're dangerous. Uh, it's dangerous to drive with them. So uh, we did a PSA video uh, a little while back but we didn't actually show how to do this. So this video, I'm just gonna try to roll through pretty quickly um, and simply show you guys how to change the steering coupler, sometimes called the damper, um, that connects your steering column to the steering box itself so that you can A, be safe, uh, B, have fun, I don't know, and C, what do we got for C, Charlie, anything? No, no so I don't know, No, <laughs> there's no C, it's just A and B. So hopefully this makes sense. This is on a 1973 bus. Uh, later buses are a little bit different in terms of the setup down here and the horn and how it connects. Uh, this is uh, one of the most annoying setups. So huh. uh, <laughs> nothing against Gus. It's just uh, these buses, it's a little bit more difficult to connect that horn wire, but we'll get it. We'll show you how. Um, we'll replace the coupler and let's do this. Okay, so here's the lay of the land. Uh, we've got our steering wheel still on there. Uh, I will show you what I've done so far. So I've loosened this nut and I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, break the steering wheel loose from the um, actual column shaft itself. Uh, that's a little trick that I just kind of came up with um, to make this a lot easier and not break your steering wheel and not have to use a big puller on it. So once you have uh, loosened this nut right here, I think it's 27 mil if I don't, if I remember correctly, uh, what I actually do with the key in the on position so that so that your column lock isn't locked. Um, I kind of scooch uh, this um, horn ground wire out of the way. And this guy's a bit big, but it, I'm just trying to show you what I do. I actually take my air hammer on a very low setting and just go And usually as soon as I do that, it pops the steering wheel free from the shaft. Uh, on those splines so you can easily remove it. Now, normally I would never say you want a hammer or air hammer on something like this, but on the bay window bus columns, what you're actually, I'm just gonna pop this off because I've already done that. I just wanna show you. What you're hammering against is actually the coupler down here and it's just flexing that, you know, which is you know, under here. And so it's not a big deal for that to go up and down slightly when you hammer it. And it's a really easy way just to break it free so that you can then slide this sheath up. So let's do that. When you go to on earlier buses that have this um, column snap ring, plastic snap ring, super easy to bust that guy. So to get down to here and remove this, you have one, two screws on either side. Once you get those, this thing is still locked in. And so once you've taken your steering wheel off, what you need to do is grab the actual column and just, oh, that's a beautiful sound. And just twist, you know, turn it as you are pulling up on it. And you'll see, despite the sound, it's coming up. And again, your key needs to be in the on position to do this. And of course the battery disconnected. We're getting this up high enough to clearance this area down here. Oh, that's such a horrible sound. So that area is clear. Since I've already disconnected this, unfortunately I can't show you, but then you just push down on this, the base of your column and you'll be able to pop this out. And I just slide it right up. I slide this guy right up. And just to make my life a little easier, grab a piece of tape and just tape it up. Okay, so our the base of our column's taped up. We've got that guy there, steering wheel's off. And then if we come down here, We've got what we see as four bolts. Oh, I forgot to mention this wire on the earlier buses connects to this guy uh, right there. So you gotta disconnect that guy and snake him out. Once we have our four bolts, it's just a simple matter of 
getting a 13 mil wrench on the underside and holding it with the box end and then getting our impact um, for your ratchet and getting it on the top side. So I've already loosened three of these. We'll do the last one, take this out and I'll show you guys how we're looking at that point. I love when I wear my ears, but then forget to put them on. That's the best. Look at that. Full hole. We have our old coupler. Gold. Charlie, can I hand this to you and get a close up of it? And then I'll show you this guy. A lot better. So there are certain ones of these uh, that are actually no good. And then there are ones that are uh, the OG German style. As you're shopping around, you can go to the Samba. There's a whole thread about this, uh, which ones to buy, but make sure you buy the good ones when you go to do this job. Cause like anything, you don't really want to do it twice. You know, a year from now when your brand new one uh, is all dry around it again. All right, so close up, we've got our old coupler removed. This is how we're looking. And what I do uh, while this is removed is I actually top off our steering box. Cause oftentimes over the years, um, the original gear oil has leaked out. So I actually pop that cap right there in the camera. Um, it's right over here and fill it up with corn head grease uh, just to keep this box in service for a long, long time to come. I just use something like this tool, get in there, pop it off. This is something I would really recommend to anybody who's doing this job. While you're in here, there's no reason not to do this. If you don't do it while you're in here, you will have a sad later. So we can tell, I mean, I can't see any gear oil in there <laughs> as usual. So we're gonna pump this sucker full of corn head grease. All right, so for those of you who are on the Samba, you've probably seen numerous threads about this and about using corn head grease in your box. It's kind of great because the fitting, your normal grease fitting just fits right into the fill point like a glove. And then you literally just pump this guy full. It's gonna keep this box nice and happy and hopefully in service for a long time. Okay, so uh, that actually worked out just fine because as you can see here, I ran out of grease, but I also, as you can see, filled it up. Uh, as soon as I took my nipple off, it was, which is exactly what you wanna see your steering box do when it gets full of cornhead grease. So uh, I'm gonna put our little cap back in there. This guy is gonna be nice and happy uh, for a long time to come. We're gonna get our coupler on there and we'll be good. We are here underneath. This is what things are looking like before we put our coupler back in. So this ground wire goes through uh, the actual uh, steering shaft, through the coupler and then grounds on the other side over here. So we'll clean off the area for the ground. So that guy will be um, passing the, you know, making the connection there. And then we have this wire, which we're gonna uh, connect to the base of the steering column. Uh, and basically what happens when you hit your horn button, it connects the ground path for the horn right here and makes it go off. Uh, so just wanted to give you the lay of the land right here. Um, this wire seems okay, but we crimped this down a little bit more and we're gonna wrap it up uh, nice and tight um, and then clean off our ground points and we should be good to go here. All right, next step in the process, we're gonna put our plug back into the steering box. And that's just a matter of putting it in. If you're doing this job and you need me to tell you how to do that, you might not need to be doing this job. <laughs> um, but here we are. So Charlie's um, videoing from underneath just so we get that second um, vantage point. But what we're gonna do here is lift up our column, put that through and then align our holes so that um, we can get our ground point nice and firm. So, Charlie, can you see things under there? Yeah. How's that look? Okay. I'll actually just gently turn this until it's gonna grab a little bit. Okay, so let's do the next one. Now we're 
I'm looking on the top, just for reference, we're gonna tighten these guys down uh, to the proper torque spec and then connect this guy, drop our base down and we'll be good. So let's do it. Okay, so last thing, connecting this wire, it goes to the bottom of the column right here. So we're gonna clean this electrical connection off. We already pinched this guy to be a little tighter. And then what we're gonna do is uh, route this through this little pocket right there so it does not get all up in the turning radius of our steering column. So we're gonna route it through there, up, and then connect it to the base of the column so it completes that circuit. Okay, there we go. Our steering coupler is replaced. Our wiring is all back like it should be. We'll double check underneath. Everything's torqued down like it should be. Uh, we're gonna put our base, the screws back on our base. Uh, we can put our steering wheel back on and we are rocking and rolling. So last step, secure our base plate. We'll be good to go. Um, I got some new washers because these were a little weird. There's like a rubber one and some random one. Uh, not OG to say the least. So I'm gonna put on some new washers. And these are uh, kind of unique screws, and so I'm actually reusing these. I mean, they're in fine shape. Uh, they're not gonna look new like the coupler screws, but um, I think we'll be okay. Thank you guys for following along on uh, this little journey of replacing the steering coupler on Gus, the 1973 Volkswagen Bay Window Bus as part of its whole Subaru conversion. Uh, this isn't Subaru related, as you guys can tell, of course, but it's just a really, really good idea, whether you're Subaru powered or not, to replace this guy if it's never been done. So uh, thanks for following along. Uh, keep following along on the journey, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Bye.